Today on the DM Layer, we'll be reviewing Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage and doing a giveaway. Hey, Lucard here. I just got my hands on Dungeon of the Mad Mage, and I'm really excited to talk with you about it. And I'm also looking forward to running it for one of my own groups. And just in case you're new to my channel, I create weekly D&D videos with information and resources to help Dungeon Masters run awesome games. All right, this is what we're going to be doing today. First, I'm going to give a quick overview of the module. And then I'm going to analyze the module on a few different categories that I personally find of particular interest when I'm running a game at my table. These categories are story and plot, usability, quality of content, amount of content, artwork, and maps. And then, once we're done with the review, I will tell you how you can win your own copy of Dungeon of the Mad Mage or another D&D book of your choice. And I imagine that this probably doesn't need to be said because I'm reviewing a book, but I'll say it anyway. It's entirely possible that there might be some spoilers in this review. However, I don't think that they're too horribly bad. All right. The review. At its heart, Dungeon of the Mad Mage is a massive dungeon crawl. A 23-level dungeon crawl, to be exact. The basic storyline is that the PCs are either hired or encouraged to enter Undermountain, the massive dungeon complex underneath Waterdeep. And they enter the dungeon via the Yawning Portal Inn. Now, the module does give you a few adventure hooks that you can use to give your players a reason to go into the dungeon. But let's be honest here. This module harkens back to old school dungeon crawls. And if your players have decided that they want to run this adventure, then the hooks probably won't matter a whole lot. I mean, your players will probably just go in regardless because dungeon. Anyway, once they actually get into the dungeon, all 23 levels of it have their own ambiance and theme, which is really cool. For instance, one level called Willow Wood is a massive underground forest filled with woodland beings and werebats. Over the course of the module, your players should advance from levels 15 to 20, which pretty much means that this book is absolutely packed, packed with content. I mean, it is a legitimately thick book. I mean, it's like, it's, 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 it's over 300 pages. There's, there's a lot in this book. I feel like you're definitely getting your money's worth as far as the amount of content, the amount of actual stuff there is to do in the module. I suspect that there is probably enough in this module to keep your players busy for at least a year, if not longer, depending on how frequently you play. Now, a little history lesson for you. The Dungeon of Undermountain was created by the Mad Mage, Halister Blackcoat. And if your players make it all the way to level 23, they will get a chance to face off against the Mad Mage himself, or become his apprentice. Now that is the basic idea of the module. Next, I want to take a look at story and plot. I am very pleased to see that there is a lot of story built into this module. It is not just room after room filled with monsters, just a random hack and slash sort of deal. And the story that's there is rather interesting too. Each level has its own inhabitants, be it drow or night hags or troglodots, and they each have their own motivations and goals. For instance, in level 9, Dwermercore, an Arcanaloth runs an arcane academy, tempting adventurers to either join the academy or trade magic items for safe passage. Level 2 is inhabited by goblins, members of the Xanathar Guild, and a were-rat gang, all of whom work against each other. And there the players have the opportunity to perhaps help one faction in its struggle against the other. The bottom line is that Dungeon of the Mad Mage is a far cry from being a pure hack-and-slash dungeon crawl. Now, of course, there is always the strong possibility that your players will turn it into just that, but my point is there is lots of opportunity for this module to be played as much more than just something where you kill everything in sight. So for story and plot, I give the module five out of five dragons. All right, next let's look at usability. Now usability is my personal pet peeve because there are lots of modules I've seen that seem to be made much more for reading in an armchair rather than actually running at your game table. What I'm looking for in this category is how easy is it for the dungeon master to find information and also scan the text to find the information he needs while he's running the game at the table. Now, the first thing that I notice 
is there is no read aloud text in this module. Now, normally this kind of sets me off and my natural inclination is to think that it's rather lazy of the game designers. However, I actually kind of like what they did instead of having read aloud text. As you can see here at the very beginning of a section, they have a quick bulleted listing of all of the important features of an area. Now what this does is allow the dungeon master to describe an area based off from the map and then give a quick rundown of the important bits that are in a room. And what I really like here is that they are front-loading an area's description with boldface text that helps the important features stand out to you. And then, after the boldface, there is more information about each of those items. Now what this does is, while you're actually running the game at the table, it makes it easier for you to scan the list of items and find what you're looking for. And I think the other usability items are pretty tight too. The very beginning of the module lists all 23 levels of the adventure and tells you what level the PCs should be at when they enter them. Now I really shouldn't have to call this out because it seems like a rather common sense thing to do. However, you would be surprised at how many modules I've seen that seem to hide this super important information in sidebars or other hard to find spots. It's almost like they create hidey holes to hide all of the important information so that a dungeon master has to search and look and beat his head against the wall to find one little bit of information that is incredibly important to running the game. Now you can see here that the beginning of each level of the dungeon lists who dwells there, including names of important NPCs, and sets up the story around that level. And many of the levels list wandering monsters that might be encountered there too. Now we are gonna delve into the maps in more detail later on, but I will say this as far as usability goes, the maps are very easy to read and understand and use at the table. So overall, I'm giving the module five out of five dragons for usability. Next category quality of content. Now we already talked about plot and story, which I think was excellently done, but there were also lots of other really cool touches. For instance, in level seven, there is a fairy dragon named Otto that plays pranks on the PCs. And there are lots of interesting NPCs for your players to interact with, such as the students of Dwemer Corps Arcane Academy. Uh, Cephalosk the Mind Flayer, Nihilus Jowled, uh, Skakriana Shadow Dusk, the Horned Sisters. Yeah, so I didn't do so well at pronouncing those names, but there's lots of cool NPCs to interact with. And you know, I will wager a guess that roughly half of the monster manual shows up in the module. I mean, I certainly didn't list them all out and count them and then compare them with the monster manual, but there is a massive variety of monsters for your players to encounter in the module. And the monsters are not just thrown into rooms willy-nilly. There is very clearly a dungeon ecology built into each level of the dungeon. And then the module explains why the creatures are there and what their goals are. I give content quality five out of five dragons. Next, and this will be a quick one, amount of content. Now, I already touched on this, but this module is huge, and most of its 300 pages is content for your group to play through. This jam-packed module gets five out of five dragons for amount of content. All right, next we're gonna take a look at artwork, but the first thing I wanna do is address expectations. This is a module, not another monster manual. But why does that matter? Well, with a monster manual or a book like Volos or Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, I am definitely interested in artwork and images of monsters because what a monster looks like goes a long way into making an awesome monster. However, for a module, what I'm most interested in is the story, the content for my players to actually play through, and the maps. Artwork is simply a nice to have, in my opinion. Now, all of that said, what artwork there is in Dungeon of the Mad Mage is very nice. There just isn't a whole lot of it. And I'm okay with that because let's be honest, if there were too much artwork, that would reduce the amount of content in the book, and then I'd probably be complaining about that. But lots of pretty pictures, for me, that's just not necessary for running a module. So artwork gets five out of five dragons because it fulfills my expectations for the artwork that I would find in a module. Now at this point, I bet you're wondering, crap, Luke, are you just gonna give everything five stars or dragons or whatever they are? I mean, really, is Wizards paying you for this review or something? First, let me say that I wish I were getting paid for this review, but I'm not. This is completely unsponsored, just my honest assessment of the module. And to prove it, now we're gonna talk about what I see as the biggest glaring failure of Dungeon of the Mad Mage. 
the maps. Now the maps are very functional and easy to read, which is a good thing because I can think of some other modules where the maps were very difficult to read and that is not good when you're trying to run a game. However, my praise stops there. I mean, in all honesty, the maps just seem to have very little artistic value to them whatsoever. It really feels like Wizards of the Coast stopped hiring artists for their maps and are now using engineers and CAD programs. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, what I wanna do is take a look at the de-evolution of maps over the last few modules I've seen. Now, we have Tales of the Yawning Portal right here, and as you can see, it's very nice, there's artistic value to these maps, there's color, and it's very pleasing to the eye. Okay, and now we have Dragon Heist. We lost color, yes, but the maps still have a pleasing artistic value to them that harkens back to the old school style of D&D map making. And here we have Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Honestly, like I said, these look like they were drawn on a CAD program by an engineer. There is nothing artistic about these that I can see. I mean, what can I say? I'm just really disappointed with the maps. That's, that's the bottom line. It almost feels like Wizards went over budget on the project and had to cut back on the quality of the maps, which is actually the best place to cut back if you have to cut back. And why is that? Because as a dungeon master, I don't need beautiful, full color, artistically drawn maps to run the module at my table. In fact, my players will never see the maps out of the module. I'm the only one that's going to be looking at them. And that's only to draw them on the grid or to describe to them where they are. And for that, the single most important thing is for the maps to be accurate and understandable. And these maps seem to be 100% that. They just aren't pretty as all. But you know what? Honestly, that is going to have zero impact on my ability to run quality game for my players. However, I imagine that if you were to use these maps online in a system like Roll20 or project them to your players, but yeah, staring at black and white maps that look like they were generated on a free D&D map generating software that you can download online, yeah, that's probably not the best experience. So the final verdict on the maps is going to be two out of five dragons. The maps are very usable, however, they're just rather disappointing. Now, for my overall rating of Dungeon of the Mad Mage, I give it 4.5 out of five dragons. Everything is really on point in my opinion, except for the maps, which are rather a letdown. However, the module looks like it would be tons of fun and I really am looking forward to running it for my players. All right, now let's talk about the giveaway. So as a way to say thank you to all of my viewers, I will be giving away a copy of Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Or it could be a D&D book of your choice because I totally realize that not everyone would be interested in this particular module. Now, this is usually the point in the video where I will tell you that you need to to subscribe to my channel for a chance to win, but I'm not gonna do that. There is only one requirement to enter the giveaway. Do something positive for the D&D community. This might be something as simple as saying thank you to your dungeon master for all of the awesome games that she runs. Or jumping onto Reddit and answering a bunch of questions that new dungeon masters might have. Or volunteering to run adventures at Adventures League so that more players can enjoy the game. It doesn't really matter what it is. The bottom line is that I want you to do something that will have a positive impact on our awesome hobby. Now, obviously this will be on the honor system, so I'm just trusting you to go ahead and do what you say you're going to do. And you know, you all look like pretty trustworthy folks to me, so yeah, says the guy who can't see who he's talking to. Now, down in the description, you will find a link to the Gleam interface where you can sign up for the giveaway. Now, I have also added a bunch of different ways to get bonus entries to increase your chances of winning. However, the only required part is to do something positive for the D&D community. I will leave the giveaway open until December 20th to give all of my viewers a chance to enter. I just want to give a quick shout out and thank you to We Write Weird Stuff. He is one of my patrons over on Patreon. Smash that like button if you found this review helpful. Click here to subscribe to the channel. And over here you can watch another fine video. And until next time, let's play D&D.